I use so many hats in IT that I don't know what to call myself anymore. Am I a network engineer, a cybersecurity engineer, a network security engineer, a developer, a hacker? Not at all. But what about a cloud engineer? In the end, all of these are just titles that are supposed to mean that you have the skills to work with that specific technology or that specific product. <clears throat> At least that's how I see it. And as long as I'm learning and having fun and sharing that with you, that's okay for me. And the next product or technology in my list is cloud networking, more precisely Azure. So in this video, I'm going to show you my plan on becoming a cloud networking engineer on Azure. Okay, to become a cloud network engineer on Azure, I started taking the training or AZ700 design and implement Microsoft Azure network solutions. So this is not a very long course. So you can see uh, the estimate time is six hours and 29 minutes. But based on my experience, this is going to take longer. Okay. And this training is considered to be at intermediate level, which means that you should have some background on networking, TCP, AP, and also a couple of things here. For instance, you should know what is a gateway. Even if you never use cloud environment, there are a couple of things. If you already have some background in networking, a couple of things here that are going to stand out re uh, really quickly. So for instance, what is a gateway? What is DNS? Uh, what is a firewall? Um, what is a load balancer? Uh, what is a VPN? Uh, what is WAN? So if you already have some, inf um, some knowledge about this concept, this is going to be way easier to navigate on this training. I already started and um, it's just learning these concepts in Azure environment, okay? And this is for those who want to be at roles as administrator or network engineer, okay? So what you will learn in this course or this training, you're going to learn how to design and implement a secure network infrastructure in Azure and how to establish hybrid connectivity uh, routing private access to Azure service and monitoring in Azure, meaning you're going to learn how to deploy a cloud infrastructure in cloud uh, inside Azure and how to interconnect that infrastructure in cloud with the infrastructure that you have on prem, meaning at your office, at your house, inside a data center. Okay. Prerequisites you should have experience with networking concepts such as IP addressing, DNS, and routing. You should have experience with network connectivity methods such as VPN, WAN. You should be able to navigate the Azure portal. You should have experience with Azure portal and Azure PowerShell. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. I didn't have any experience prior to Azure portal or Azure PowerShell. But I can tell you if you have experience, uh, some experience with IT, that's going to be just easy to navigate. Okay, especially uh, Microsoft products, you just click and next. Okay, so they have uh, these well organized, I must say. So let me collapse this one. So they have a couple of modules here. So you have the first module, Introduction to Azure Virtual Networks, and this is going to take you around one hour and 10 minutes. But again, as I said, expect to take longer. Uh, you have the following model. The second one is going to be design and implement hybrid networking. Uh, you have design and implement Azure Express routes. You have load balance non HTTPS traffic in Azure. You have load balance HTTPS traffic in Azure. You have design and implement network security. And you have design and implement private access to Azure services. And the last one, design and implement network monitoring. So um, it's well structured. I might say that uh, I already took a look at it and seems to be quite easy to navigate uh, between the, the, the courses. So the first one I'm in right now is the first module. And if we take a look at it, so essentially this is what you have, like what you're going to learn in this module. So you can see I uh, probably am already at this module. And do they have uh, uh, theory and they have also hands on, which is great, by the way. Uh, at least for me, the way I learn is by having hands-on 
and then understanding the concepts behind that. So first I like to do and then understand how or why I did that or why that thing is done in a certain way. Uh, and this is great and it's very, very easy to learn this way with hands-on with lab. And so for instance, let's take a look at this one. So exercise design and implement a virtual network. So they're going to teach you actually how to do things and you'll be able to do that. And the the way to do it, that's going to be, might be a trick one. And I'm going to explain in a minute. So for instance, this is the a fictitious uh, deployment that you're going to do, like deploying, uh, um, how do you call it here? Uh, resources and with different subnets, with different services just like you would have on-prem uh, at a data center right you have different services at different subnets at different networks this is the same thing on cloud okay so you just have to you're going to learn the naming of things and how to how the things are connect uh, each other okay so you have this concept of regions that you can imagine is like in different physical locations but all of this is happening on cloud okay now, if you want to practice the, the labs, you are required to have an Azure subscription. And how do you get one of these? Well, if you sign up for the first time, Azure will actually give you uh, probably 200 uh, USD or equivalent to that. And you'll be able to use that for 30 days. And based on the training length, uh, around six hours, I believe it's enough for you to get your hands dirty and learn whatever you need to learn. And I'm going to say you this, and I'm going to say it once. That restriction or that limitation related with the subscription is associated with the email that you use to sign up for this training. Know what I mean? And that's all I'm going to say. So you can launch the exercise and that's going to take you to Azure portal uh, and then you'll be able to practice the exercises that they're going to have. So now to look at the exercises, so let's go to this uh, module and it's going to take us to this page. Let me increase this a little bit. And let me take, I'm going to remove myself from screen. Okay, that should be better. Because the font here is very, very, very small. So, um, this is uh, one of the labs and you can see you have multiple tasks here so this is going to be like you have a company and this company has some services on site and you're going to deploy the infrastructure on cloud so the goal is to migrate the services inside uh, that are on site to be uh, sent to the cloud okay that's that's essentially what you're going to do throughout the training and uh, they have all the information here required. These are some of the tests I already did. Okay. And so you have screenshots here of what the portal looks like. So it's not like they're just uh, giving you instructions and it's just text. No, they actually have videos. They have screenshots, which make it quite easy uh, to learn. And I really, I mean, I'm enjoying the course. I'll be honest with you. And they have here all the steps they're going to guide you through all the steps on what you have to do okay so you don't have to guess uh although there are some tasks that are going to probably give you the first example and then the second and the third one you have to do by yourself but again this is going to be very easy to do okay and you have multiple tasks here uh, but again, it's well written, this course. Now, another thing that I would like to point out is how am I taking notes for this training? Now, there are two ways, two strategies that I use. One of them is using Microsoft OneNote, and the other one is using uh, this tool called Obsidian. So first, uh, Microsoft OneNote and why I'm not using OneNote and why am I moving away from OneNote? Well um because of things that are happening with microsoft there has been just too much ai and too much lack of privacy to say the least so i am using more now obsidian actually i've been using obsidian for years now um but the reason why i didn't move completely to obsidian is that at the time i started using obsidian they didn't have 
this functionality to sync documents in cloud meaning if you are using obsidian in your device in your computer and you have another computer you won't have any way to sync the files or you didn't have before and it looks like they have it now and the benefit with microsoft OneNote is that you could sync your notes across multiple devices so if i'm using on this computer and if i open my notes on a different computer uh, the notes will be saved on cloud microsoft and then they will be synced so which means that when i open in a different computer i'll have my notes there it was a great benefit it is one but um i don't know it's just me this is one of the reasons why i'm moving towards obsidian and obsidian it's quite easy and actually way better in certain things than one odd based on my experience so for instance they have this cool thing here i can order things uh, by different categories as you can see i have books business personal technology so let's just take a look at technology so i can have this in different hierarchies so for instance this is on cloud and this is microsoft and this is this course because i can take other courses related to microsoft related to cloud uh, related with this training so more precisely uh, so i'm doing now the az design and implement uh, and I have these right now. This is the module introduction to Azure Visual Networks. And I have here the lessons that I'm taking. So you can see it's nice and clean. You, you get to use uh, this in format of markdown, which means that you can like uh, kind of use uh, different formats for letters. So for instance, you can also use list lists uh, what else? You can add images. Let me see if I can grab an image. So this is an image, by the way. Okay. You can reference notes inside notes. You can add links to inside the documents that are external links. And so for instance, if I click on this one, it's going to take me to this GitHub where I have all the exercise for this course. So this is just the way I'm using Obsidian to take notes on this course. Now to answer a common question that normally I receive when I'm taking a new training or a new course is whether I plan to take an exam, a certification exam. And the short answer is no. As I've been shouting here on the channel and also on my socials, you don't have to take certifications so or take exams just because they exist. Uh, I'm a big believer that you are required to learn the skills to really understand the technology but unless you are required you shouldn't focus on taking certifications on taking exams because they're not a proof that you really know something and as long, when you focus too much on taking the certification taking the exam you kind of study under pressure and for me it just seems to be fun and interesting to learn the things that i want to acquire the skills that i want just because i want not because i want to have a certificate that says that i passed the exam although i'm not saying that it's not important but it's not as important as you're really learning the skills and put those skills to practice okay so i don't i don't plan to take any certification at all related with azure this is only because i want to get this uh as one of the skills azure networking i'm already uh aws cloud network engineer what i can call that and azure is going to be uh, another one gcp is going to be another one but just because I want to acquire the skills so that I can deliver them in the market, whatever is required for a project or not. OK, so this is guy. I uh, hope you guys found this video useful. If you took value from this, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.